Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Hasbula. I am a senior lecturer working in Malaysia and in this video, I'm going to share with you the methods that I personally use to get admitted into one of the top 10 universities in the world. These methods have helped me to secure admission into a doctorate program in Imperial College London, which is currently number 7 in world ranking, which I successfully passed before returning to Malaysia to serve as a senior lecturer. And I attribute that to these methods that I'm about to tell you. This video covers the preparation to get you into the right mindset before attempting to apply. In order to be accurate, I will focus on my own experience which comes from the perspective of a foreigner student that got into a top university in the UK. However, even though each university has different platforms and procedures, the tips that I'm about to give you would still be applicable. These methods should work for engineering programs in these top universities but even if you are applying to different programs, I hope you might still find this video useful and pick up a few tips and tricks along the way. And of course, everything that I'm going to mention is going to be listed in the timestamp here on your screen so you can skip around the video if you feel like it. Okay, now let's get on with it. First of all, you need to start applying at least 6 months before you intend to go. This helps reducing your stress simply due to the prospect that you are going to be knocking at the doors of a few top universities universities in the world. An advanced degree or a PhD, in my case PhD, in engineering would take between 3 to 4 years to finish. Throughout these periods, there are two things that you should be really comfortable with. First is your supervisor and the second is your research area. I will cover research area a little bit later but right now let's focus on finding the right supervisor. Before applying, you should do some research on the academics that you might be interested to work with at each of the institutions. This could be done simply by googling top researchers in your area. Look at their current list of publications to see if the topics that they are working on is aligned with your interest. Younger academics tend to provide more guidance but expect a lot from you. They often help a lot and work together with you to get the data. A more senior professor usually have a laid-back attitude where they focus on research direction rather than guide you on technical items. So you will be the one doing the heavy lifting to acquire necessary data for your projects. There are other ways to know your potential supervisor which I'll explain in a bit. Be sure to pick only one academic for each department of the school. Remember that you are trying to get in and not create frictions between the staff there. You will spend only 4 years there but they will be there together for much longer time. And trust me, as an academic myself, all we do is talk about students. If you send email to more than one academic in a single department of an institution, they will know it and that could put you in an awkward position. So do your research well, take your time and find a person that you think is best for you for the next 3-4 years. Then, once they are happy to receive you, ask for their permission to put their name in the admission form so it gets directed to them directly. This makes admission process so much quicker. The second thing that you should be very comfortable when applying for the top universities is your research topic. These universities are the best in research so they expect a lot from their postgraduates. It's just a matter of time after admission that you'll start to feel overwhelmed with things that you do not understand. As for me, it was the language barrier when discussing certain topics at high level that threw me off my game for the first 6 months. So because of these challenges, it is very important that you are definitely comfortable with the research area. It's true that this area may change along the way, but the fundamentals should be the same. If you are good at simulations, don't go and pick a project that is totally experimental in the first place. Make sure that there is an element of simulations in there so even though there might be experiments later on, you can learn to pick it up slowly once you are there. I have mentioned before that there is another way of knowing your potential supervisor better and that is through his or her current postgraduate students. Very often, this information is publicly available in their group website. It is also possible that the supervisor will direct you to one of his students to send you more details about the research. So take your time and email them asking how it's like to work with the professor. If they are happy to reply and help you, then you know that you will be in good hands. However, if you receive negative feedback, 
perhaps it's time to find another potential supervisors. When applying for the top 10 universities, you should expect that they will conduct an interview. And for this, you need to be thoroughly prepared. Put yourself in your potential supervisor's shoes. You will want someone that is mature and knows what he is doing. You also want someone that is already on top of everything technically so he or she can hit the ground running once admitted. Say that you are applying for a research area in computational fluid mechanics. Then your supervisor would expect you to already know how to derive continuity and momentum equations. In my case, they even asked me to write the equation on the spot. Later, I found out that these interviews, even though it seems to be procedural, but it's really important for their decision making. So, be sure to polish your undergraduate knowledge before you start applying. After you have done your research on your potential supervisor and the topics that you are interested in, it is now time to email them. Now, the academics in these universities are very busy. You are likely to have one chance to email and convince them that you are the right candidate. For this, you must craft your email to be very precise. There is no point in asking if they have available project for you. Be specific and tell them what you are interested in and show them that you already done your research on what they are working on. Attach your CV and if possible, get someone, perhaps your old lecturer, to write an excellent recommendation letter and attach it together with the email. If you have sponsorship in place, don't forget to mention that in the email as well. Also, ask them if there is anything you could do while waiting for admission. These are just to show your enthusiasm and also to get them to reply to you. This is what I did and I got replies 8 times out of 10. Granted, some universities are very strict where all communication goes through a secretary first. In this case, most likely you will not be able to reach a particular academic. This is particularly true for a distinguished professor in the institution. But if all goes well, they will call you for an interview and later ask you to proceed with online applications. For me, this is secondary as the most important thing is to get an academic to accept you first. You can then put their name into the application. Very often, the school will not interfere once you have stated that you have been in touch and interviewed by the professor. Of course, the technicality of online application will vary depending on the institutions. In the USA, they would require that you sit for a certain exams and write essays about yourself. MIT, for instance, would ask for 3,000 words description about yourself in an essay. Imperial College London was more straightforward. I had to sit for an IELTS exam for English proficiency and that was it. I applied to both at the same time but by the time I'm working on my essay for MIT, Imperial College had already sent me the offer letter. There you go, guys. A few tips that I can give you based on my experience applying to one of the best universities in the world and got accepted. In summary, do your research well before applying. The expectation from these top universities are very high for postgraduate study, so a little research would go a long way. Once you got in, it opens a lot of opportunity for you. A friend of mine even got a job at Ferrari others in big companies and universities. I suppose the best thing is that PhD study develop a strong kinship between your colleague and that will remain close until today. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you got something useful out of this video. If you have any question, please feel free to leave your question in the comment section below. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, perhaps you'll consider doing so. I make videos about life as an academic, engineering tutorials, productivity, and general study videos like this. So thank you very much for watching. Have a good day and I'll talk to you soon.